Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm going to show you how you work with physics in multiplayer. Now, first of all, physics is a big topic for networking because it's one of the hardest things to do properly. Now, there's multiple ways to go about doing physics, and one of the more common ones is using prediction. However, prediction often comes to with the cost of being more complicated. Whereas the method that I'm going to show you today is the absolute easiest one to get started. However, that comes at the cost of being more sensitive to high ping or latency. So be aware of that as we go into this. I think this is definitely still something to play around with. If you've not worked with physics and multiplayer, I think this is such a great place to get started. So first things first, let's try and set up a new character. So I'm just going to create an empty, which is going to be my player. And I'm just going to put it at 000 and then maybe move it a bit over here and whatnot. I'm going to child to it a sphere. That's obviously the easiest way typically to show something being physics based is the fact that it's well a sphere. Right, so let's stick with this and let's make sure that the sphere is in 0, zero, zero too. But uh, I mean, in the end, shouldn't really matter that much. Now, obviously working with physics, we want to work with rigid bodies. And now the way that this method works with input synchronization, essentially it means that the server is actually in charge of all the physics. This is how we can make the physics interactions between all clients very smooth, is the fact that there's one true source or one source of truth, which is the server. So essentially doing this, let's go and make a new script and let's just call this... Uh, player physics movement or something. I can call it whatever. And we can add this to our player. Now there's a few other things we want to add to our player. We also want a network transform. This is essentially how it's going to be driven back from the, the server to the player. So essentially how the data is going to move is that the player is going to do some input, right? So the player does some input, which sends that to the server, which handles the physics, which then network transforms it back to the client. I hope that makes sense. So essentially what's going to happen, and this is why it's prone for latencies, we have this many steps between the player actually doing some input and actually seeing it again, right? There's a lot of things going on here. I mean, technically, you know, you could cut this away and this away, but still, you get the idea. That's like, that's essentially three steps, right? There's input to the server handling some stuff to the network transform, then sending it back to the client, right? Which is a lot of back and forth. And that's why it's prone to to latency or very sensitive to latency. But that being said, it still does feel good in my opinion. The only thing is there's a delay on your input, which can feel bad, but if you have sort of slower or heavier movement, that typically is found to be quite acceptable actually. So let's first of all, set up the network transform for it. We pretty much just want to keep it as normal. However, we want to toggle off owner auth because we want it to be the server that's authorized. So let's first of all open up our player physics script here and let's just get started on scripting. So let's make this into a network behavior like so in the per net namespace. And now let's get a few things. So first of all, we of course want the rigid body. So I'm going to get the rigid body. It's going to be our rigid, whoops, rigid body like that. Now we're going into our on spawn method and I'm going to use the one with the boolean. And essentially uh, there's a few things we want to do. So if we are not the server, there's a few things that we want to handle. Um, now, however, in case that we're the host, it might also be worth to check uh, that we are not the server like this. One of the reasons why is because as server runs, you know, for the host, it will run once as true and once as false because, you know, you're both the server and a client. Um, however, this server might be the better call for us here. So actually what we can do is since we are purely host, we can completely return if we are the server. Uh, if as server, we just return. That way, you know, we only ever reach once here with every client. Even the host will only ever reach once here. And if he is the server, he'll do one thing. If he's not the server, he'll do another. Now, if he is not the server, uh, we essentially want to disable everything on the rigid body that makes it dynamic. So I'm going to do uh, rigid body dot is kinematic, and I'm just going to set that equals to true. Um, and this should really be most of it, right? This is essentially what handles the physics. This way the server can do it. So actually we can shorten that. We can say is kinematic equals to is not the server. That's essentially what that statement said. And this should pr pretty much work fine. Cool. The next step that we have is the actual movement and the syncing of the movement. So let's also just subscribe to the ticks if we are the owner of the object, right? So if is owner, then you know we still want to be in control of this. So what we can do is we can do the network manager dot on tick. And then we can subscribe to that with just a method that we call on tick. I'm just going to magically create that method with the old enter. And let's also go into the on destroy method and just simply paste that and unsubscribe again correctly. There we go. Right. So in here, now we have the on tick. And essentially here, I just want to once again do if as server, I just want to return. 
there we go just because i don't want it running twice for the host okay cool so essentially what we want to do now is we want them all to send essentially send their input to the server so let's do a server rpc and we want to require ownership and everything so we just want to keep this default and we'll essentially do yeah a private move uh, a private uh, void that's just called move and it has a given direction now we can just keep this uh, into a vector 2 and it can actually just be named input i think that's cleaner uh, and essentially here this is where we want to convert it to movement right um, so the server will do the moving and essentially the client will just see it again so here we can now create our input so i'll make a var input that'll be equals to a new vector 2 uh, and this is essentially what we'll create off the input. You can see I'll just use get axis of the horizontal and vertical. And then we'll essentially just call move with the input. Cool. And so now we're in the server, right? So now we essentially have the input and the input will be sent to the server basically as a request to move. The server will move them and the network transform will handle the rest. So now we're just in here. All you have to do is just handle movement as if this was completely single player, right? And it's really that easy to work with. So you might be used to this with a rolling ball tutorial that you know have existed for a long time. So looking back out here at our ball, we can also just give it our rigid body and whatnot. That should be fine. And now let's take the input and make it into a vector three. So let's make a uh, var movement, which will be equal to new vector three. And I'll use the input.x zero and input.y. And let's also add a variable for however fast we want to move. Private, uh, let's add a float, move force. And let's also add maybe a max speed, for example, zero this field, private float max speed. I'll just make that, I don't know, let's do yeah, let's do five and let's do a move force of, I don't know, let's try 10, for example. I, I don't know. These are just completely random values. So this is going to be a movement. I'm just going to time that with the move force. And then I'm going to take my rigid body and do an add force with the movement. And what I also want to do now is if the rigid body dot, whoops, dot velocity. And that will probably be, oh yeah, velocity. They got rid of that. I guess it's linear velocity now. Dot magnitude is greater than the max speed, which is return. All right, cool. So let's try this. So essentially here we have the player. I'm going to make him into a prefab. I remove that and I'm going to add it onto the player spawner, which I have right here. So I guess this is so it's player one here because I have multiple players. So I'm going to put that in. So I'm going to put that in there. There we go. And if I just hit play now, you can see oh, we spawned, of course, in the damn ground because all the spawn points are below the ground. That's my fault. Hold on. Let's just raise these up a little bit. Something like that should do the trick. And there we go. And now we're moving around. Oh, and also I actually just realized I don't want to control max speed like this. You can if you want to. I don't. I actually prefer doing it by just simply adding drag. Okay. Another thing we can also quick do is we can add interpolation to the rigid body. That'll just make it, you know, more smooth for the actual host. If you are just a dedic if you just have a dedicated server, uh, you probably uh, don't need this because then clients will already be interpolating because of the network transform. Um, and let's also just make the drag higher, something like that. And let's try it out. So here you can see we have the, this is the host here, it's moving around. And as you can see, this works perfectly fine. Here we have the client now moving around using WST as well. And if I hit them into each other, as you can see, they can collide just fine. Bonk. And they can push each other. Cool. So now we actually have physics working. Let's also quickly just add something like a jump and something like a bounce when they hit each other, just to show you that the interactions actually work really smoothly. So let's try and add something like a jump force. And let's also, um, now you can see we're starting to get more possibly advanced input here. So one of the things that we could do is we could just make a private struct that'll be our input struct. And this could, for example, hold something like public vector two. Oh, and this probably, let's call it input data. It's just a bad name. Public vector two, uh, this will be our input. And we can also make a public bool jump. I don't know if we need anything else. I guess something like this is probably fine. And let, okay, so now let's create some new input data. So let's make a var, and this will actually be our input. I guess let me do it like this. So this will be new input data, like that. And this can now be populated. So we can take what we had here. Oops, I do need that. And then we can fill in the input, for example. Input can be equals to what we had before, which will be new vector two. 
And also this of course now needs to take our input data instead. And this needs to use the input, I guess dot input in this case. I guess let's call this input data just for clarity. So that'll be input data dot input, input data dot input. Uh, and then we can also, you know, handle the jump, for example. So if the input data dot jump, then we'll do a rigid body dot add force in the vector three dot up times with the jump force in the impulse force mode like that, which will, you know, give us a jolt upwards with an impulse force and something like this should work. And now another thing is obviously with input, it can be a little bit tricky. So first of all, let me also just up here uh, say that if we're not, so let's do enabled equals to is owner as a normal thing. So now we can handle uh, the jump input here. One of the things with input you've got to remember is on tick doesn't happen every single frame. However, input is checking for every frame. So if we just did get keyed down with the space bar, that's high likelihood it won't actually register it properly in the on tick. So what we want to do very quickly is just have like a bool that holds the data for whether we have clicked the jump. Uh, so let's do something like we'll jump or whatever. You can call it whatever really. But essentially what we need to do here is we need to set the jump equals to the will jump. And then in here we can do if input dot get key down and then that'll be key code dot space. Then we will set the will jump to true. And then up here we can just set will jump back to false regardless of what happens because now we've already used it. So, you know, if you've clicked it in any frame, then on the next take it'll essentially store the will jump and set it back to false regardless. So that should work fine and now that gets sent through as well. So we can, let's go test that properly as well. Make sure that works. So you can see now I can move around and if I press space, it'll do a jump. All right, cool. And this guy can move around. If I press space, he will do a jump. Now let's last thing do the interaction. So let's do on collision enter. And let's do some kind of bounce force that is added. So let's just add a new one here and this will be bounce force. And I guess let's just make that 10 as well just to keep everything consistent. And essentially here, first of all, we want to do if is server or essentially if we are not the server, we just want to return because again, everything has to be handled by the server. Now, what we'll also do is if other dot, uh, and that'll be, let's do game object, I'll try get component out player physics movement, which essentially means we've hit another player. So we can call that other player. So if we have hit another player, or again, we can just inverse this and return to keep it clean. So we don't have to go a layer in. And then we can calculate the direction. That's actually exactly what it wants to do here. So we take the other, we subtract our position and we take the normalized vector of that. That essentially just means we get the normal vector of it. And then essentially what we can do is we can take our rigid body dot add force and we can add force in that direction times the bounce force with the force mode of impulse. And now essentially that should also just work. Again, as you notice, this is completely like, this is logic that'll just work in single player, except for the is server. This looks like single player code. Same thing goes for inside the move function. It looks exactly like single player code, which is exactly why I really like using this method. It's very, very easy to deal with. So now let me try and have this guy come over here. This guy come over here. And when they hit each other, am I doing it in the wrong direction? Let's see what it says we hit. Oh, ground makes sense. Let's see if it sees that we hit each other. It does. Am I doing it in the wrong direction? Well, actually, that's an easy way to test that. By just simply going on to, let's just do one of the players. Just take this player, for example, is that us? That is us. And I'll just make the bounce force. Let's do minus 10 just to see if we bounce the other way. We do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it, the directional calculation, I guess, is just wrong. That's my bad. We will do our position minus the other's position. There we go. Look at me doing math. Vector math. Don't judge me. I'm a multiplayer developer, not a mathematician. <laughs> Okay, here we go. So now when they hit each other, we should see them bounce as well. And that should work perfectly fine in the multiplayer. And just for good measure, let me show you the client side view. Don't mind the colors. That's because I messed something up with materials, but you'll see everything physics wise works perfectly fine here as well. They can hit each other. And as expected, they'll bounce off each other. I can jump and yeah, it all feels as it should. Obviously I'm not, I don't have a ground check, so I can jump forever, but regardless, this works. So now you are able to make a physics based game exactly the way that you want it. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope you had something to learn. It should be very, very easy to work with physics and multiplayer. And I hope you understand kind of the, the pros and the cons of using it. 
I very much recommend going this route, especially if you're just making kind of an arcade style game. This can really work well. If you do need it to be fast paced, do need it to be precise, you do need to use something like client side prediction would probably be the most common go to. And that's something the Pernet system will have it in the near future as well. So let me know in the comments what you think, if there's some other tutorial you'd really like to see. And other than that, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.